हाय गाइस नमस्कार कैसे हैं आप लोग आप देख सकते हैं स्क्रीन पे सब एक भाषा में बोलो जी वेल ट्रेजिडी इज अनफोल्डिंग लास्ट ट्वेंटी सिक्स ट्वेंटी सेवन ईयर्स वी बीन वर्किंग ऑन दिस टेन मिलियन चिल्ड्रन फ्रॉम इंडिया शुड राइट टू द प्राइम मिनिस्टर वी वॉन्ट सेवन पॉइंट एट बिलियन ब्रांड एम्बेडर्स आफ्टर सेव सॉरी वॉट्स नेक्स्ट हाय नमस्कार कैसे हैं आप लोग आप देख सकते हैं स्क्रीन पे सदगुरु हमारे एक भाषा में बोलो जी <laughs> so, सदगुरु हमारे साथ है मैं हिंदी में भी बोलूंगा और इंग्लिश में भी सदगुरु से पूछूंगा सदगुरु ऑब्वियसली इंग्लिश में आंसर करेंगे हम रिक्वेस्ट करेंगे उनसे कि बीच में अगर वो हिंदी में भी कुछ बोल सके सो वेलकम सदगुरु थैंक यू फॉर योर टाइम नमस्कार सदगुरु हाव यू सो सदगुरु वी हैव आस्ट लाइक वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट दिस कैंपेन फॉर लाइक more than one and a half weeks and people have shared so many questions so they wanted to ask you one on one but i told them ki main baat karne wala hu sadguru se so you can ask me i'll pass it on to sadguru so sadguru first question from aditya he is from lucknow he is asking uh, yes we are a part of save soil movement but what is the save soil movement agar briefly isko samjhana ho people will ask us family will ask us friends will ask us briefly how what, how to define this movement uh, unfortunately people's focus uh, has shifted to so many things but all life irrespective of anything whether the life is in water or in the oceans or walking here microbial life insects birds animals trees plants everything is the product of soil there's no question about that now it is a well established fact today every responsible scientist is saying this that already over 50% of the top soil which nourishes life is gone and in countries like india where we farm all the 12 months of the year generally if there is water we'll farm all the 12 months most other temperate climate uh, nations farm only 4 to 6 months so especially here india africa and other regions and also in europe and north america the loss of soil is phenomenal in india 62% of the soil is considered uh, you know reasonably fallow mm-hmm. so in a way the whole world is slowly turning into a desert and uh, everywhere there is a lot of talk about climate change global warming but there is no focus as to what is the role of soil in this open plowed soils and paved soil <laughs> these two are responsible for nearly 40% of global warming and climate change so soil has to be fixed there is no question about it what is fixing soil mean it's very simple if you take sand and add enough organic content into it it becomes soil If you take soil and take away all the organic content it becomes sand. So do you want sand around you or soil around you is a question. If you want life you need soil. So if this has to happen what do we have to do? Well I can do something you can do something. See we kept our lands well this is very alive. But uh, we don't know what the next generation will do. I'm sure these will do well we don't know what's the next generation beyond them will do there's no guarantee i'm saying because it's already happened previous generations kept it well in our generation we've ruined it similarly similar things can happen in future this is why we are looking at establishing policy across the world that if you own land minimum 3 to 6% organic content should be in the soil this is everybody's responsibility we have to do it it can come as a recommendation or it can be mandatory depending upon the seriousness of the situation in a given place but it must happen so right now save soil movement under the conscious planet banner is about bringing about that policy change every country can do it in their own way every region can attempt it in their own way every latitudinal position traditions of agriculture economic conditions will determine all this as to how it is done but the important thing is no matter where you are your soil ha- should have a minimum of 3 to 6% organic content this is what 
Save Soil Movement is about. It's not about me taking care of this. Yes, you must take care of this. But the important thing is to ensure that future generations have living soil. Because soil is a living entity, it's not a material. Absolutely. So, Aditya, you got your video. You need to cut it and you need to share it with your people. And ye hai Save Soil Movement. Sadhguru, Yogesh is asking from Mumbai. He's saying, was there an incident that moved you so much that one fine day you decided that let's save our soil? <laughs> What happened? <laughs> well, a tragedy is unfolding. Most people will see tragedies only when it comes with a bang. But if you're sensitive, you can see it happening all around you. It's not that suddenly we thought of Save Soil Movement. Last twenty-six, twenty-seven years we've been working on this. Uh, see, I'm not a scientist, I'm not an environmentalist, I am like a worm. But if you ask me, as a worm, a worm in this soil knows more about the soil than this worm and any scientist on the planet, believe me. With all due respect to all of them, they're doing certain amount of work. But the worm, when the soil depletes, the worm immediately knows because it affects his life. So similarly, I am like a worm, that means I'm crawling on this planet. Where is everybody else? Oh, they live in the elevated place called their head. I live on the planet, so if I... if I step on this land, I know whether the soil is rich or not. I don't have to even dig it and see. If I just step on it, I know, because <laughs> the entire thing is always reverberating. Your very body is the soil that you walk upon. How come you have no sensitivity? Because you are kind of lost in your own psychological drama too much. Your drama is becoming more important than creation and the fundamentals of creation. This is the fundamental of life. This soil, especially first twelve to fifteen inches of topsoil, is the fundamental of almost eighty-seven percent of life on this planet. But uh, we are not sensitive because uh, our drama is going on either in our head or on our phones <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Sadhguru, Arvind is from Delhi, now he's asking a very important question. Being a Delhiite, I'm more concerned about air, air pollution. Of course, water pollution is also uh, one of the major problems. So, for me, air pollution or pani ka pollution problem hai. So, pehle mujhe wo dekhna chahiye ya should I follow this movement and talk about soil first? See, whether you want clean water or pure air, the most fundamental thing is soil. Because if you need water, it's important soil is rich, otherwise there's no place to hold water. Unfortunately, today's generation is thinking you can hold water in a plastic bottle or in a tank or in a dam or in a lake or a well. No, that's not where water should be. Water should be in the soil. Soil's ability to hold water is eight hundred percent more, eight hundred percent more than all the rivers on the planet put together. The water should be in the soil, not anywhere else, but it's all over the place because we think it's useful of only if it is, you know, where we can see it. No, it is useful here only because the soil has uh, uh, water content, that's why the trees have grown, that's why everything is growing, that's why your food is growing. Right now, this whole idea of modern irrigation itself is a very half-baked idea. I'll take you for a walk in the jungle. If you dig with your finger, not with some pickaxe, just with your finger, in any season, it will be damp. That's how soil should be. There, the organic content is somewhere between fifty to seventy, seventy-five percent. Well, we can't do that here. If you do three to six percent, soil will be alive, you can do reasonable crops. If you really want rich soil, at least twelve percent if you get to, you don't have to irrigate the land. Simply, it'll grow by itself. Great. Uh, this question is very interesting, Sadhguru. She's ten-year-old kid. Her name is Bhavya. She's from Nagpur. She's saying, Sadhguru, I'm your youngest fan. I watch. Well, she say youngest. <laughs> she can't say that. <laughs> anyway, wonderful, Bhavya. Bhavya, Divya. Bhavya. Bhavya. So she's saying, I watch your videos regularly. Even I want to be a part of this movement. But uh, neither I can ride bikes nor I can make uh, videos and post it on social media because my parents doesn't allow me to do that. So, what can I do with my classmates, ah. my students, my, my <laughs> well, friends? 
For little girls and boys like this, uh, they have a very important job. The movement is called safe soil, but just for children, I'm using the word or the term save our soil, because the soil belongs to them, but we are using it up. I want every adult to feel this. So save our soil, I want at least ten million children in India and across the world in proportion for their populations in every nation to write to the Prime Minister or the President of the nation in this country to the Prime Minister that ten million children from India should write to the Prime Minister, please do something about saving our soil. We want a policy, what will you do? Because without this generation's support and the future generation's support, no political leader can take any bold long-term decisions, bold long-term investments. Everybody is doing everything short-term because people are asking only for short-term things. So I want Bhavya and her friends and all that age group in the country, ten million of them, <laughs> let her inspire how many she can, let her do that. But ten million of these children must write a letter to the Prime Minister, we will see how the mechanism is, physical letters, if they can write and mail it, it's fine. Ten million letters, Prime Minister's office may not be uh, <laughs> equipped to handle, but they must understand the spirit and the concern of every child. It's not that they don't understand, but without this expression, an elected government cannot make long-term decisions because resources are always scarce. If you do one thing, something else will not be done. Do we want long-term solutions for this nation or do we want to do titbits of today? So if people like Divya, children like Divya speak up and say, we want long-term investment in this country, not titbits for the day, then that will happen. Perfect. Divya, Bhavya, all of you, please write a, a wonderful letter and you need to share it with me first. You know my email ID and my social media handles. Thank you, thank you very much. Sadhguru, Nitin is from Bangalore. Now he's asking that, and in fact he's just sharing that out of three, there is one motivational speaker these days on YouTube or social media and on Instagram. And but they talk... I am not a motivational speaker, <laughs> huh? <laughs> exactly. So th that's what his question is. So he's asking that uh, they talk but not many things happen on ground from their side. Here every two years you start something new on ground. Aray, every two years I've not started anything new. Let everybody understand this. Everything that we have done is only about conscious planet. Yes, you may call it inner engineering, it's about creating conscious human beings, which is conscious planet. You may call it Project Green Hands, it is building up for this. Till now we've planted some sixty-five million trees, that is six and a half crore trees, living trees. Then we talked about rally for rivers, this is about conscious planet. Kaveri calling on the ground, still working, it is about conscious planet. Tell me what have I done other than raising human consciousness towards the right kind of action? Nothing else. This is the only thing I've done all my life. Don't think every two years I'm doing something different <laughs> So he's asking what motivates you? Do you also watch some videos online? <laughs> <laughs> See, I never want to be a motivated person, I am not a motivated human being. So, uh, it's very important that you are not a motivated human being. Unfortunately, people are always thinking that somebody should motivate you. What's wrong with you? Are you not life? What are you? I'm asking what are you? Anybody, Nitin or whoever, what are you? Are you life? Are you a Delhiite, he said? Uh, Bangalore. Bangalore. So, you're identified with small things, this is the whole problem. You're identified with a football club or maybe a cricket club, cricket team, or you're identified with your city, with your family, with your silly, whatever qualifications you have, a little brand that you wear, you're identified with something. Traffic in Bangalore. Right. Traffic in Bangalore, I don't think he's identified with that. <laughs> he would like to be disidentified, but I'm saying, you first and foremost need to understand you are a living life. And that's the only thing that matters, that you're living right now, you're alive, this is all that matters. All the other nonsense doesn't matter. 
Okay, it's part of the social milieu, we'll play that game. Everybody has to play that game, we live in the society. But you don't have to become that. If you are life, life is effervescent by itself. You don't need anybody's inspiration for your heart to beat, right? Mm -hmm. So you got a brain which has got a fog, maybe you had COVID, I don't know. You got some brain fog, you need inspiration to chase the fog a little bit. And if you chase the fog within uh, two hours, again it comes back and fogs up. First of all, if you see you are a living life, and if you experience that, life is always effervescent, it doesn't matter. Whether you're fifteen or fifty or hundred, it doesn't matter. As long as you're alive, it is effervescent, your heart is beating, right? If it stopped, then we will excuse you. If it's beating, you must be bursting with life. Right. So if you're bursting with life, you don't need anybody's inspiration. You will be fine. What will you do? Everybody don't have to do the same thing. Everybody will act according to their aptitude and maybe the need in the society. But right now, people are not experiencing themselves as life. Their whole thing is about, first thing is survival. Another thing is more and more desires and pleasures to be fulfilled endlessly. Well, spend your life and see after sixty years, seventy years, look back and see if it's worthwhile. I would like you to live a life that if you look back and see from your deathbed, you must see that you have lived your life well not in somebody else's eyes. In your experience, you lived well. Other people, whether they recognize it or not, it's their problem. I don't know, Nitin unsubscribe karega unko ya, I don't know, but... <laughs> <laughs> He's going to unsubscribe me? No, not All you. All the best. The, the motivational speakers used to listen to, that's why. Oh, it's up to them <laughs> They're doing what they can, <laughs> it's okay. Sadhguru, Shweta is from Lucknow. She's asking, Sadhguru, if given a chance, if you had to pick a celebrity or a known personality, who do you think can become a brand ambassador for this movement? A anyone? Like... See, right now we are looking at uh, getting as many people as possible. As a simple number, I said at least 1,000 well-known celebrities and influencers should be there. I think we're easily getting to a number like six hundred, seven hundred. Maybe we'll get to thousand or even more because this is not my project. This is not my project. This is a generational responsibility. I want everybody to understand this, that this is a generational responsibility. It's not that I do it, you do it, it's not about that. All I'm asking is from March twenty-first, everybody, you don't have to support me. Everybody talk about soil for one hundred days, in your own ways. Do your own research if you want. If you want help, we will give you a lot of material. If you can do it your own, fine, but run your own campaign for one hundred days. The important thing is, as a generation, in a concerted way, all of us say that we have concern for the wrong that we have done, how to fix it. The important thing is, this must, get, this must get enshrined in the policy for long-term well-being. Otherwise, I'm doing something here, this is good, but it's... it's not a solution. So we need thousand brand ambassadors, right? So... No, no, not thousand. We want 7.8 billion brand ambassadors because every human being who breathes and walks on this land and eats food from this land is an ambassador. But those who have a following, those who have a certain name and fame in the world, they have a special responsibility because if you do not use your popularity for the well-being of the people who are following you, what is the point of that? Absolutely true. Thank you. Thank you, Sadhguru. Nirav is asking, Nirav is from Surat, Gujarat. He's saying, Sadhguru, your initiative is about each one, reach one. You know, save soil, each one should reach one. Every day. Every day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say just one. <laughs> so who was the first person you reached out to when this... this initiative occurred? See, it's not like it boom, it just came like this. I'm saying I'm working on this for over thirty years now. So, who is the first person? There's no such thing. Because whether I speak about it or not, 
about human beings being conscious forever, all my work is about that. If you become genuinely conscious, people don't understand what is consciousness. Consciousness means this. See, your thought and emotion is functioning from a certain amount of memory. What you call as a memory is a certain boundary. Your physicality is a certain boundary. And your thought and emotion, mental structure is a certain boundary. See, body is a certain kind of intelligence. Mind is another kind of intelligence. Body, only this much boundary. Mind may have that much boundary, but still it has a boundary. Consciousness means it's another dimension of intelligence. You know, there are people who like this word, so I'll say it three <laughs> times. Dimension, 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 okay? For all those people, because they, they feed on that word, so I'm just helping them <laughs> So there's another dimension of intelligence which is not ruled by one's memory, that means it is boundless. So if you touch this dimension of intelligence, I don't have to tell you what is right and wrong here. If you stand here and if you breathe, you will know what's happening right here. You don't have to listen to anyone. So the whole work is about that. It's not that today I started talking. If they want to know, the first program I started when I started speaking, I started with seven people, there are six, seven here. Including me, seven. No, including seven. you, seven. Seven. <laughs> yeah. I had seven students. You know, I know... I knew half the town, everybody was my friend. But after one and a half years of uh, not doing anything, I was very busy building a business and doing this and that. Suddenly I withdrew from activity, I just traveled around aimlessly all over the country. And uh, when I came back, I decided I will share what is happening with me. And I tried to enroll people, nobody wants to come. Suddenly they think I'm dangerous. <laughs> I built the damn businesses by myself. No, I didn't owe anybody any money. But I just dissolve my business or hand it over to somebody, just like that. They think uh, I'm dangerous. So after much coaxing and coercion, only seven people came. I'm grateful to those seven people because for the first time I discovered I actually can teach something. Till then, <laughs> nobody could teach me anything. Nor could I ever attempted to teach anything to anybody <laughs> So, suddenly I realized I could actually find words to express what was happening within me. So it was supposed to be a four days... Uh, four days, two hours. But every day it went off to four hours, five hours. And when the fourth day came, they said, this is very good, can we continue one more day? We did, and one more day. So it became a six day without time restrictions, just going into four, five hours per day. So after that, there was no looking back. I knew I can find words to what's happening within me. <laughs> Super. So, Nirav, each one reach so one. So that's when three. I started talking. Yeah. So since then, each one reach one is happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Sadhguru, Sundaram is from Pune. He's saying well, I'm... Sundaram should be in Tamil Nadu. Huh? <laughs> he must be in Chennai. Why is he in Pune? <laughs> he's an IT professional. He's, okay. He's saying... Uh, they go everywhere. He's saying... Farmers can save soil because they work day and night on farm, soil, land. How can an IT pro... I can only save data. I can't save soil. How can I save soil? What's my role in it? <laughs> uh, I think uh, people like Sundaram should take a wow. From now on, they will just eat the computer data. <laughs> they will not eat food. If they take that vow, then they don't have to bother about soil. Okay, so anybody eating here or computer data? <laughs> Hello? No. All food food people only. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I don't know what Sundaram is going to react on this answer. Sundaram, please you can you can write me back. Thank you. Shruti from Indore, Sadhguru, she's asking that we were very advanced in many fields earlier, all Indians, like we were well cultured. We had greatest of spiritual gurus who walked on this planet, on this earth. But what happened to India? Like how, how we are talking about this? Like we were conscious enough to understand that dharti hamari mata hai, but kya hua? What happened now? See, a uh, land that was uh, a culture that evolved with the prime aspect being human consciousness, over a period of time became more moralistic rather than being conscious. Once they became moralistic, they started deciding what is good and bad. 
So one thing that happened was, we thought, what are the finer aspects of life? A very deep involvement in mathematics, astronomy, music, like this we became into this deeply engrossed in the spiritual process, all this. But we did not produce enough fighting men. So when the invaders came, they did not come with the intent of invasion. They were just bandits. They want to just loot, rape, run. This is their way. Mm -hmm. But when they saw people were so docile, <laughs> bandits became emperors. So that's a serious mistake, which we are now trying to correct. <laughs> And this is why probably we do not know what <laughs> uh, it is, I don't want to make an analysis of that. But among the many things, one most popular teaching in India was delivered in a battlefield. Somebody who's, uh, who is uh, a warrior's guru and also seen as a divine entity is encouraging him to fight. Because this is the problem, tangled in their own moral nonsense, they won't do what they have to do in a given time. If you cannot protect your land, your women, your children and your culture and your wealth, then you're not a man, that's what it amounts to. So, not everybody should be fighting, but there must be a certain segment of fighting men. Not picking a fight, but if it is needed, to defend things that which are valuable to you. Now if I say this, oh, what kind of a spiritual guru is? Because spiritual guru is just supposed to sit like that with a constipated look on his face. Well, you can do that. In the past invasions have happened, we know what terrible things happened to us. Today, you and me are talking here because there are nearly a, ma a million men and women who are standing on the borders of this nation so that you and me can walk here talking about other aspects of life. If they didn't stand there, well, slaughter would be here, not somewhere else, we must know this. People think battles happen on the border, they're just stupid. Battle happened, battles came into cities, they burned down cities, they did terrible things to people. Have we forgotten? Unfortunately, most people have forgotten. They think battle happens on the border. It's on the border because people who are on the border are not letting it come into the country. It is because of their dedication, their commitment and their sacrifices that we are here talking what we are talking. We should never forget that. True. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Sadhguru. Kalyan is from Bhopal. Now he's asking, Sadhguru, you have traveled like across the world, you have traveled many cities, countries. Which one country do you think can become a role model for Save Soil Initiative? India? Why not India? Why are they asking which can become? See, one important thing about India is, even today we have a massive agricultural population, that is people who are involved in agriculture, I think a uh, little over sixty-five percent. Allied industry and everything if you take over seventy percent, seventy percent of the population engaged in either agriculture directly or related issues. When this is so, transforming the soil or regenerating the soil is going to transform that many lives. Today there is enough research in the world to show that s lack of soil nutrients is the basis of any number of diseases that human beings are going through, both physiological and psychological. Psychological ailments and lack of micronutrients are very, very directly connected. So when this is the case, when seventy percent of the population is engaged in it, why is it that we ask, who can be the role model? Why don't we say, let us be the role model? Right now, Kaveri Calling project is being seen by the UN agencies as a role model for tropical nations on the planet. So why can't we make it across the country? Absolutely. So next question is connected to this, uh, Sadhguru. So Rohini is asking Sadhguru… This is… this kind of questions come because these days, young people have been trained from a very early age, right from schools, how much can they earn? What clothes can they wear? Where… what nonsense can they do? This is all. They are not looking at how to build the place they are in, whether it's a city or a state or a nation, how to make this into a wonderful place. This is not there. 
because they think this is all for some crazy deshbhakts. Are you and me can only do well if the country is doing well, isn't it? Absolutely. Nation is the largest entity through which you can address a given population. We still don't have that kind of a setup where there's a global government, we can address the whole world together. The largest way to address any group of people is through a national identity. So nation becomes important. Is nation an ultimate thing? No. Someday, if all of us can erase the national borders and we can just live as one humanity, fantastic. But are we anywhere close to that? There is an ideal and there is a reality, right? Sadhguru, Rohini is asking, Sadhguru, aapne miscall bola tha, humne diya. You asked us to plant trees, we planted. What a, what a great thing she gave, a missed call also. Oh, I bow down to her. No, she's asking what's next? You know, after Save Soil, you have something in your mind, like what's next? Next is she must get enlightened. That's my first okay. project. <laughs> that is my first project, I'm still, still on the same project. In between, because you are sleeping, I'm waking you up with other things. Thank you, thank you. Sadhguru, uh, Ayush is asking uh, that there are people who are planning to settle on another planet. They're, they're working towards it. But you're talking about conscious planet. So I'm confused because they're also intelligent and, you know, uh, successful people. So what should I do? Like, whom should I follow and what's happening? Like, and what is easier? Making this planet conscious or going to some other planet? <laughs> See... According to every scientific data, and according to anybody who has little sense in their head, one... one planet that we know which can sustain life in a wonderful way is this one planet. It seems they have found some six hundred thousand planets with same kind of chemical composition and stuff. Somewhere, mm -hmm. some million or ten million or a billion light years away. So those of you building vehicles for this, all the best for you. I'm not against science or exp exploration, it's fine. But if you do not know how to keep this planet, what is the point of you going to another planet? There also you'll do the same thing. Have... first learn to live well here, practice here and then go to heaven, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Everybody thinks they'll go to heaven and then be joyful. If you're going to heaven, at least you must practice being joyful here. So if you want to go there and live well, at least practice living well here, no? Then you can go wherever you want to go. I'm staying <laughs> <laughs> Sadhguru, Anand is saying, I'm not a religious person, neither I'm a spiritual seeker. I'm an atheist with capital A. Do you think I'm still a part of this movement? As I said earlier, whether you're an atheist or theist, whether you're Hindu or Muslim, whatever damn caste you belong to, whatever else you are, man, woman, child, animal, whatever you are, are you eating food or are you eating your atheism? If you're eating food, uh, soil is important. Wonderful. Sadhguru, quick rapid fire, you just have to pick one out of three. Kaveri calling youth and truth save soil. They're what? not three different things, they're one. But for... in... in terms of campaigns, of course... Like... <laughs> they're not three different things, they're just one. Still, so how if can... you have to pick one. How can I pick one? It's already one. Okay. <laughs> Which is close to your heart, farming or golf or riding bikes? <laughs> Uh, I do whatever is needed in a given moment. If I have to transport myself, I use a motorcycle. <laughs> if I want to play, I play golf. If I want to work, farming is one of the things that I do. So how... how is it comparable? It's like... it's like asking, would you like to eat or go to the toilet? Okay, let's move to the next Different question. times you do different things. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> true, true. Final rapid-fire question. In your experience, volunteers from which part of the world is more dedicated? India or overseas? <laughs> now, very, very important question, guys. Please watch it carefully and... Because uh, your show is going only in India, I will say India. <laughs> <laughs> is that going to help them? So, one, one follow-up question. Tamil or non-Tamil? 
There's no such thing wherever I go, people respond, but uh, there are more Tamil people because I've invested so much time in Tamil Nadu. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Sadhguru, for your time. Final message to all the people who are watching on internet and other platforms. Uh, the final message is, finally you will be in the soil. So, soil is one place which makes life out of death. Please don't make death out of it. Thank you, thank you very much, Sadhguru. Once again. Mm -hmm. The only place where you can make life out of death, isn't it? You bury anything dead, life will just burst out.